Enjoy. Thank you very much. So out of interest, before I get the speakers on stage, raise your hand if you could perfectly define the definition of a new space. So that's 100% of you that say, I have no effing clue what this panel is about. So that means this should be somewhat interesting. Basically, new space means we're talking about space. Yes, you may have understood that. But it means the way suddenly entrepreneurial matters have come, and come alike and have disrupted the way NASA and the likes are building shuttles. Long story short, suddenly entrepreneurs have started building rockets, satellites, and a lot more. And the big topic is reusability. So long story short, I've got three people who actually know what they're talking about, and I'd love you to greet them as loud as you can, so I know you can do that bits and bretzels. So give it up for my three speakers, Bulen Atlan, Marco Fuchs, and Frank Salzbeger. Welcome on stage, gentlemen. That's the part where you applaud. <laughs> gentlemen, right that way, take a seat. What have you, and the panel is called, Who Owns Space? But before we discuss that, maybe you'd like to introduce yourself, who you are, and what you actually do. Yes, uh, good afternoon. It's great to be here. I'm Marco Fuchs. I'm the CEO of OHP. We're a German space company. We build satellites and rockets parts and uh, all the stuff you need to go to space. Thank you very much. My name is Frank Salzkiv. I'm head of Innovation Adventures at the European Space Agency. So we support about 200 startups uh, per year, and we supported 800 and uh, about 200 projects per year. And I worked for Apple, had my own startup. And we try to foster innovation space and do crazy things. Thank you. Hello, uh, I'm Bjorn Taltan, a longtime SpaceX graduate now, uh, space investor here uh, representing on one side the company. I'm a, a co-CEO of Mineric, building laser communication terminals for space companies, but also investing into companies like the ESAR Aerospace, which is a Munich area uh, rocket company. That's like the coolest title in the world, I'm a space investor. That sounds amazing in itself. So gentlemen, I mean, the, the topic is called who owns space, so let's make it simple. Who, who owns space? Well, um, some law back from back in 1967 says you're not supposed to be able to actually own space. It tells, it tells everyone that you're not supposed to own it, but actually I will we define it as space is everyone's, and it's space is about really bringing data and connectivity and what we really need down here on Earth back to Earth. It's all about serving all of humanity. So if someone asks me who owns space, it's actually all of us. I agree. Uh, there, there's a gentleman, lady, I don't see it, with an astronaut costume. There's one flag on it, which I do not like, because space be belongs to everybody. And the European Space Agency, we would have a lot of flags. So you all <laughs> own space. What it comes from there, you know, everybody who has a, a satellite TV using space, if you do telecommunication, you use space. If you have your cell phone and find your way to the next destination tonight, you use space. And therefore, it's also up to us to jointly use it and make the best out of it. Thank you. Yeah, everybody who dares to go owns it. So space is uh, the new frontier and it's, uh, it's out there to be uh, uh, um, explored. Now, I mean, we have 20 minutes to save mankind and about 15 minutes and 40 seconds left. However, I asked the audience who can define what this new space thing is actually all about and 100% of them said, I don't actually know. So maybe you guys can just help us in a simple words, so what is it we're talking about? What's so different? Well, maybe if I start, I think New Space just uh, says that uh, there's a lot of dynamic uh, developments going on in space. It's not the old space anymore, which was dominated by space agencies. Of course, it started all as a, as a race between the, the Americans and the Soviet Union. Now, we have more than 70 countries that, that have owned space agencies, actually, and we have uh, hundreds of companies that uh, invest in space. It's a big, big uh, race out there, and um, th that has really changed the dynamics of the whole industry. Now, I'd like to ask you, Bulan, I mean, you also spent some time on SpaceX, right? So, does Elon own space? Elon definitely does not own space, but he definitely owns some of the uh, large ideas about it. I actually see one T-shirt right there that says Nuke Mars. Great T-shirt, thank you. Um, yeah, he definitely has f some fantastic ideas about what can be done and what should be done about making life interplanetary. He talked about quite a bit about two days ago, he did the unveiling of Star Starship and talked about really how 
human consciousness is so important and we have kind of no planetary redundancy. And in, in that mind, he's talking about, hey, we should be on more than one planet. Hey, the dinosaurs doesn't, don't exist anymore. Maybe that same fate should not be happening to us. But does he own all the space? I don't think so. <laughs> well, that we've established it. How does it look? I mean, obviously, we're in Munich, as we can tell. How does it look like from a European perspective? Because Elon seems to be doing things over there. How are we doing over here? First, we also have our space champion, and I think OHB is, is a good example. Of course, we can do more. And uh, when, when you see already what, uh, I think it was about $2 billion, $2 billion, NASA and the Department of Defense was investing in contracts in SpaceX. That's great. So show me one startup where one country invests $2 billion. So I think we need also more of that. What, what we see, we're supporting a lot of start, uh, startup companies building launchers, building drones, building autonomous flying, building great technology. So the raise, to, to raise the company is possible, but I think what I would like to see more, that our new space, which is not only rocket launchers, can really lift off is that really corporates, the state, really take more advantage of that. I think you all have that problem, all the entrepreneurs. Uh, the Irish have an saying, on the shoulders of the giants you see further. So I think the giants should allow the kids climbing on their shoulders. And, and I mean, when we spoke early on outside, the three of you said, look, there's this tremendous potential in this area, but seemingly no one seems to be tapping in. You need so much of that raw potential. Oh, a few, obviously, you are. But yes, sorry about that. So hardly anyone seems to be tapping in, yet we have this crowd of really interested people in the overall entrepreneurial topics, and they're not there. So what do we need to do to become more competitive in this seemingly so promising field? There's a lot of from seemingly. The, from, the, from the European perspective? Yes. What is today here, I think in Apple we had a nice uh, uh, job title called Evangelist. And I think first space is cool. First is the future of mobility, of communication. There will be no autonomous flying, shipping, uh, driving without space because space is also infrastructure. And maybe what we have to refine is in our hearts, our curiosity. You remember when we were all kids, we were giving a shit what somebody else said, oh, you should not do this and this and say, and I think this we should find because this is space. This is why my kids have uh, lights in their eyes when I speak about space. So I think this is what we have to find. And uh, trust me, it makes fun. And my old director general once said, in, in mechanical engineering, if you do something new, you have friction. And if you have no friction, you do something wrong. So friction is fun. You know, if the people say you cannot do that, let's do that. And in space gives you that. Space gives you that room to improve that and do that. Now, Marco, observing you, you can see you looking down and nodding as if that was very telling what uh, Frank was just yes. saying. But first, I would like to um, recommend to you to check out Elon Musk's uh, presentation uh, of the Starship last, uh, it was two days ago. It's really amazing. I mean, uh, it's, it's on YouTube and it's a one and a half hour presentation with questions and answers. And it's really amazing how humble he explains that. Um, and you get a feeling that there's something special going on. So I can only say as a, as a, as a space company here in Europe, SpaceX is doing really an amazing job. It's the leading product in the market, the Falcon 9 for sure, and the plans that he's now pursuing are really, really mind-boggling. So I'm really impressed. Uh, and if you want to feel what's going on in our industry, of course you have to look to the US. We are followers maybe here in Europe, but I think we are also catching up. We are more the people that want to do useful things. We want to do uh, commercially viable things immediately and so on and so on. And he's just doing a big starship that settles Mars. This is a nice story, I find. I mean, it's, it's very telling. Are you saying we have to be braver yes. as Europeans? I think you don't only create value with convincing people you have a business model that really pays, uh, I don't know, money next, next day. So you have to create something because everybody, I think, senses that if you can make regular flights to Mars with a couple of uh, dozen people, there is value in that. Whatever that is, uh, there is value in that. And that's something I think we should also um, pursue as investors. Now I can see Bulan edging on his seat to say yeah. something. Yeah, to be fair, it's like, isn't that exactly what this continent did when, they, when, they, uh, when we went over to the new world? And actually, well, sure, there was people there, but actually exactly that type of entrepreneurship just completely opened up a whole new continent and brought all the, all the stuff that came along with it. I think we have to be brave. We have to somehow be willing to take a leap of faith going towards a future that's not maybe completely certain, but we know that there is a huge potential there, and that's what we have to unlock. 
a question to you. Who wants to develop nice vacuum cleaners? Who wants to join the next moon base and work on that with the technology? Yeah? Uh, okay, That's I think we can improve that. Yeah, we can improve that. Two three people, three people, five. Okay, next year I want to have to see all hands up. 3% of this crowd want to be on the next new moon base, so we're effed. Fantastic. Thank you very much, innovators and entrepreneurs. Best audience ever. Whatever. Just kidding. Now, <laughs> you're smiling happily, not trying to insult them, but I, I don't have expected at least 10%. Don't worry, there's no rocket outside. But well, let's talk. Let's imagine we would have a glass ball and could say, look, this is what we want in the future. If we'd have to create a wish list to become and, and, and to tap into this potential we have here of entrepreneurs and people who are willing to do it, what are we still lacking in Europe? Maybe also from your perspective as a space investor. Yeah, so uh, one of the things that we really are um, lacking or really working on when you talk about the uh, space evan evangelist is the understanding of where, what really role space uh, is playing in our, in our life and what it really can be doing. Because when we talk about space, we think expensive. And it, let's face it, it is, even in its new space form, it requires capital. It requires, requires quite a bit of it. We talked about spa uh, SpaceX getting about two, two billion from NASA. And when we look at the world, we just see problems after problems that all require money. So the immediate answer is why? Why do we do this when it requires so much money? And then we have to turn it back and see it really show what space can actually do. Here we are looking at a world with four billion people not connected. We here in nice bits and pretzels in the, in the middle of Munich don't think about people without connectivity, but it is one of those things that is a complete de-equalizer amongst all the people out there. And that's what we have to be, for example, tackling. That's exactly what we do at Mineric right now, really trying to get connectivity into every part of the world, getting, it, the, getting the whole world equalized. And that's what space can do. And I'd just like to jump in, and I see you nodding, Frank. I mean, just to put it into context, when we talk about space, we're not just talking about building rockets and going to Mars, right? There's a mo lot more to it. Yeah, I think what you have to see, of course, there's the rocket, what you see, it's the science mission, what you see, but when you see the, 10,000 of satellites which are planned to launch. Um, you only have to go from the border to, from Salzburg to Munich and then 10 minutes, I don't know if you know that highway, which is always packed. Uh, uh, 10 minutes you don't have a connectivity. So when you're looking on the world's map where you don't have connectivity, satellite will make this 5G available everywhere. Everywhere connectivity, everywhere imagery, and you will can navigate. So we have a generation that's never get lost. Might like my kids, I have two boys, 12 years, but when the iPhone runs out of power, they're lost. So because the navigation chip is not feed it at the more with power. So I think this is also space. It's the, it's, the, it's the backbone of the digital economy. And it's up to the people to take a share of it. And when we look into Munich, we have bright people. You're all bright people here. We have uh, talent, we have great university, we have industry, but I think you only have to put it a little bit better together and go in one direction instead of north, west, south, up and down at the same way. And I think if you have that, the cake is yours, huh? I mean, Marco, you, you, you're, you're sitting over there and quite thoughtful again. I mean, it seems to be a bit of a challenge building companies here in Europe, yet you succeeded in building a tremendous company and probably there's a lot more to come. What's your thought on the recent minutes? Well, I think that the space industry in Europe is very successful. We are growing, we're becoming more and more relevant. Um, it's becoming much more market driven. You know, in the past, of course, it was agency driven and um, the space industry was started in the US. It was started um, with the Apollo program, but then following also elsewhere from defense uh, and aerospace companies. But now we're an own industry. We are an industry on our own, with our own rules, with our own uh, uh, environments. And that's, of course, creating massive opportunities for the established base players, but also for, for new entrants. I think the big challenge in our industry is that people don't really understand the value creation process that well than uh, in other industries people do. So I think if you go downstream, if you go to the, to the user end, uh, there are many opportunities. Of course, the big infrastructure investment, and everybody talks about going to Mars and so on, that's not an obvious business case. That's a value creation process, but not a business case in a, in a, uh, in a traditional sense. But in between that, in between exploration and stuff that uh, uh, you just talked about um, that you use every day, uh, we have more than 1 billion Galileo users already in Europe, um, uh, not just the GPS, but also Galileo. Um, and uh, that obviously is a, a wide playing field for all kinds of investments, all kinds of things. The reality of life is in a globalized world, the view from the space 
it opens up opportunities for telecommunication, for observation, for, of course, climate is a big thing, environmental uh, protection, big things, navigation, all kinds of stuff. And you don't really have to travel far. You can do a couple of hundred kilometers up there. You can do uh, lots of commercial relevant things. And there's one topic I'd also like to tap into is trying to understand the ecosystems we have here in which we are playing. Can you give us a rough overview of what we have and what there is to, to improve on, on the European ecosystems? It's very fragmented. Welcome to Europe. <laughs> but it's also the strengths. Uh, because uh, when you have different people looking to the same problem, uh, the, uh, different solution, and together we are strong. So when we're looking to Europe, I think there are two, three good clusters in Munich, and Bavaria is one of the best aerospace clusters, I would say, you can find in Europe. Maybe uh, the local, and I see that with a European perspective, are not doing as much as they could do out of that. Uh, as I said before. So we have a great university, we have our incubation center here in, in Oberpfaffenhofen and with two outlets. So companies are supported by the corporates, by the university, by ESA, by DLR, but I think you can do much more out of it. And I think that it's, it's still uh, in, the, in the first gear, you know, still 20 kilometers per hour. And I think we have to put these things together. An event like uh, Bits and Bretzel really helps to, 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 to shape that. And that would be my wish for the region. You, know? you have everything here. You just have to do it. I'm seeing you nodding heavily. Yeah, uh, one of the things actually we have quite, quite well here in Europe is the uh, ground, uh, the, the main technology that enables space exploration. There's quite a bit of actual technology, even if you look and into the US, that comes from Europe that enables a lot of these space missions. Maybe it's the tier one, tier two that, uh, that is in the, ba uh, in the backstage, but actually is supporting that. When you look at a lot of the optical systems, even if for the largest telescopes, you see mirrors coming from Europe, you see communications equipment, you see uh, uh, RF equipment, and now laser, uh, laser communications equipment. They are coming out of Europe. We do a lot of the uh, a lot of the small pieces, and that kind of also comes from that fragmentation. We have many of the, in Germans would say, Mittelstand. We almost have a uh, we have a space Mittelstand here in Europe that is really enabling the space race, and it's, we are really pushing that with cutting edge technology. And there's also one thing I'd just like to kind of kind of put my finger on before I try and come to a conclusion. You also, all of you said we're super early days in this, right? So this is right now where the whole market is being built. Uh, if, I, if I may jump on that, we, we are kind of in the same place where people were thinking, internet, what is that thing? What could it really do for me? I'm a taxi driver. I, I just sell clothes. What could it do for me? I think it's going to be that next revolution that really touches all the businesses. It's not going to be a business for itself. It's going to be a tool that pretty much everyone will utilize in their own business. Now, I'm going to try and summarize this somewhat. <clears throat> one, one last sentence, if you feel yeah, like it's, it. a, it's like an evolution. Involve or die out. Your choice. <laughs> now, gentlemen, first of all, I'd like to thank you. That's the part where, if you like, you applaud. Now. <laughs> and I think, I think if we had played a drinking game, I'm half Irish, so I'm allowed to say that, and every time one of the three of them said opportunity, you had to have drunk a shot, you'd be all hammered. Very often people say, what's the new area? Where should we go to? We heard opportunities 17 times in about 18 minutes. We heard we're in early stages. We heard there is a lot here already. We heard it requires people, and I'm just quoting, who are curious. Uh huh. We need people who are brave. We need people who have it all, who are willing to take actions. We also heard opportunity once in a while. We heard it so early that we need people like that gentleman over there sitting in a spacesuit or Nuke Mars t-shirt at the front to evangelize and make this topic work. The thing is, again, it's not just about building rocket ships, it's about discovering all these tremendous things. And all you need to do to become part of this is, besides building rocket ships and so on, taking one first step, and that could be, we didn't talk about this early on, but we have three people in this field. Approach them if you have ideas. There's so much there for the taking. And one, long, one last thing I'd like to add to it. There's always people that say, I wish I could, I wish I could have, I wish I should have. It's there for the taking, but there's only one single person in life that's going to hold you up, and that's you. In that sense, thank you very much for listening. Help us build this new space. Thanks. Take care. And no excuses.